Hello and welcome, this is Roland from graphicinmotion.com and this is part 5 of our video tutorial series about exploding a light bulb. In this part we will export our scene now, we will set up a multipass render in Redshift and we will export it as an open EXR sequence to create a multipass composite in After Effects later on. So let's get started and let's jump right into Cinema 4D. Okay, so now let's set up the render settings to prepare our final output. And therefore I go to my render settings right here and I will change the renderer to Redshift and of course I have to specify my output and in this case I want to output my final version with an HD resolution or full HD resolution of 1920 times 1080 and I use the HDTV preset here actually and I make sure that I export all the frames that I need and I need frame number 0 to frame number 249 so this is my entire timeline here. Then on the saving here, save options, we want to enable these and then we want to create a multi-pass image and let me specify quickly here where I want to save this and I will save it right here, that's okay. You can name it of course. And as a file format I use OpenEXR, you can come in here then and can choose different versions. And yeah, the compression methods of OpenEXR, there are many different ones and each compression method has its advantages and disadvantages and its purpose. So if you want to learn about these, then I would consider just typing EXR compression formats into Google and you will find a good documentation about that. In my case, I'm choosing this one here, GWAA. It's a bit lossy, but for our purpose, this will deliver a very good quality and the file size is not too high. Okay, I use the 16-bit floats here and a depth of 32 bits. I want to have a multi-layer file, that's important because then all our AOVs will be in one layer and AOVs are multi-passes, it's just called AOVs in, in Redshift and we will take a look at this right now. Okay, so let's go to our Redshift settings here and here in the AOVs we can go to Show AOV Manager and set up what we need. So if we take a look at our scene, let me quickly get this out of the way a little bit here. We don't have too many different passes here. So what we have is a direct light, we have refractions, we have reflections, we have a diffuse light, yeah that's the direct light actually. Then we have some volume light because our visible light is a volume light. So if we go to our frame where this is still visible, um, this is a volume light, so we have to include that. So let's just include these passes that we need. So let's include a beauty pass so that we have it. Then let's include caustics because maybe we have some caustics on the floor. I will check that when I do a test render. I also want to use a depth mat and we have to set this up in the next step. I want to use the diffuse lighting. I want to use emission because emission is actually the emissive material on our wire, on our filament. Then I want to use global illumination. I don't need because I don't have it in my scene. I will not enable it. We don't need it. We need reflections. We need refractions. We need, we don't need shadows. We need specular lighting and we need volume lighting and that should be it. So now with all of these selected, let's quickly go to our render view and enable a bucket render because then we can take a look at these individual passes here and you see this is already finished and now I can take a look here okay we have no caustics actually in our scene good then I can delete this we have a depth pass but this is not set up correctly yet we have to deal with this a little bit the diffuse lighting this is our lighting from our lights in the scene of course and also the shadows I should mention. Then we have the emission and the emission is not visible right now because it is actually inside the refraction because it's inside our glass. So you will see this in the next one then. Reflection, that's good. Then refraction and here you see we have these elements now inside here because they are covered by our glass but after the glass breaks then we will have these as a separate or visible on our pass. 
And we have the specular lighting, that's also good. And we have the volume light, and this is also important. Okay, so I think we have all of our AOVs, and I said caustics we don't need. Well, let's check that on another frame when the light bulb is already broken. So let's take a look. And this is probably a bit too far in. So let's see right here when the pieces are shattered on the ground. I just want to take a look here whether we get something in the caustics, but no, we don't get anything here, so we don't need this. Okay, so let's go to my AOVs again, to my render settings. And let's just delete the caustics because we don't need these. Let's go to the manager and let's delete this. And let's set up the depth pass. And the depth pass is useful if you want to, for example, uh, composite some elements uh, inside your 3D space and we will use this maybe or maybe not but it's always good to have it. So you see here we have the filter type that's set to full, that's okay, and then we have the depth mode and this is set to set now and if I put this to set normalized and here is use near far off the camera but I don't need this now, I will just use it with this here. So let's quickly go into our scene and you see now it looks a lot better but I think that we do not need the distance of 10,000 because our scene is not that big and I will just turn off redshift for a moment and go out of my camera and I will just take a look here because I know how big this is because here is my backdrop and this is actually oh let me quickly take a null here and shift it back just to see where this is yeah this is around 5,500 here so we will just put in here in our settings of our depth mat. Let me go into the camera again so that we have no problems here. So in the settings here of our depth mat, we will put in here, let's say 5,600, then we are covered. And now if we re-render this, we should see that this will look pretty perfect. So now the background should be quite white and then we get a nice, a nice gradient until or to the parts that are near to us they are nearly black and this is exactly what a depth mat should look like okay so now let's double check whether everything is set up everything is set up no it's not set up we didn't put in here our or i didn't tell you the sampling i'm using i already put it in but i didn't tell you we have to go through these of course that's very 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 important so for the minimum samples here i want to increase this actually to 32 then I have the maximum samples, in our case 512 should be enough. And I want to override my reflection, my refraction, my light and my volume with higher samples, in this case 1024. I don't want to go into too much detail here now, it's a very complicated topic. And yeah, GI is turned off, as I said, we don't need this in our example scene or in our scene. Okay, so this is it with part 5 of our tutorial series. And now we already created our multi-pass render setup and I will render this. And in the next part I will show you how to import this correctly into After Effects, how to set up a quick multi-pass composite and how we can add multiple objects like a shockwave, like some smoke and like a little bit of color correction to make this really look good inside After Effects. And thank you very much for watching this part and I really hope that you continue in part six. Goodbye.